Story time, guys. So uh, I got a message from my good buddy, Jamin Burton here, fellow vlogger out there in St. Louis, Missouri. He sent me this text message, which reads, I sit down at the table and a guy says, hey, I know you, you're friends with Nimi. Then he says, hey, I have a favorable flop story for you. He tells me a story about being a big Nimi fan so much so that he had on a favorable shirt during a car accident in which he flipped his car three times, was ejected from the car, and luckily he only broke his hip and ripped his favorable shirt. He ends this story with, now that's a favorable flop. My mouth was on the floor by the end. Uh, turns out this gentleman's name is Corey. Corey, thank God you're okay. Thank God the, the damage, the bodily damage was relatively minimal. Not to worry, we are gonna get you a new favorable shirt as soon as possible. Sit tight, my man. Greetings, greetings, hi there. Uh, today is Tuesday and it is currently 9.25 in the p.m. Talked a little bit about this uh, recently, in fact, how Tuesday tends to be the slowest day of the week here in Las Vegas. Tuesday, Wednesday, probably pretty close, but probably a little bit more Tuesday. Um, I think Tuesday has also given me the worst results in my poker career. So just chilling tonight, taking it easy, laying low a little bit. I'm actually here at the Golden Nugget Casino, poker room, spa, suites, hotel, extravagant. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be hopping into a uh, poker game here shortly, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to recap a couple hands that took place a few days ago. And it wasn't in a regular No Limit Hold'em game. It wasn't even in a PLO game. These hands took place in a short deck, No Limit, Texas Hold'em game at the Bellagio. We managed to get a short deck game going at the Bellagio. It was only four-handed. Uh, the game normally plays short-handed. Normally plays six-handed, I think, is ideal. We got, we got a game up and running just like that. We were playing five and 10 blinds, which is not usual. The game is usually played with antes and no blinds. Uh, but we just decided to keep the five, 10 blinds in place. So let's get into a couple short deck hands here real quick. Um, so we're playing five, 10, as mentioned, and we're actually playing with a straddle on for a decent percentage of the hands. So in this hand, the straddle is on once again. The under the gun player folds, and I look down at Ace King suited on the button. Premium hand in full deck, and it's still very much a premium hand in short deck. So I make it 60 to go here on the button. The small blind puts in a three bet to $210. Big blind folds, and it's back to me. We're somewhere around $1,500 effective here. Uh, and again, this is a premium hand. Um, the player in the small blind had been splashing around a little bit. So uh, those very two straightforward factors leads me to a four bet. So I make it $600 to go. Small blind call. So we're off to a flop, which does not come too favorable for us. It comes jack 10, nine, two diamonds, one heart. He checks it over to me and I just uh, check give up here slightly. Obviously looking for a queen here on the turn and maybe consider uh, putting in more money with an ace or a king on the turn. But uh, this flop is gonna connect with such a high percentage of his hands that I don't think I wanna do anything other than just check it back here. The turn does not improve us, it's offsuit six, and he goes ahead and jams all in for the remainder of his stack. No choice here to do anything other than fold. Uh, that's what I do, I let it go, and he shows us jack-10 offsuit. So you might think that that is a very loose play by him pre-flop, and while that may be the case that it is somewhat, somewhat loose, um, the connector hands, even the offsuit connector hands, are going to have a lot more value in short deck than they will in the full deck game. So. Yeah, again, maybe a little splashy in his part, but not quite as terrible, I don't think, uh, as one might expect in a full deck game. All right, in this next hand, we're only playing three-handed, but the straddle is still on, and I am on the button with the straddle on in that position. The small line comes in for a raise to $60, the big line folds, and I look down at queen 10 off suit and make a standard call here. The flop comes down nine, eight, six, rainbow. So that gives us a double gutter. Seven or a jack would make us a straight. He checks it over to me, and it's a decision between betting and checking. Uh, the flop should be pretty good for my range. I think I can have all the sets here. I can have straights, I can have two pairs. Checks it to me, and I decide to take the aggressive route and put on a bet of $100. My opponent does make the call here. So we're off to a turn card, which is the Ace of Clubs, which brings it back to our flush draw. He checks it to me. I decide to keep my foot on the gas here still. Uh, we have Queen High. 
and I can continue to rep all the hands that uh, I mentioned on the flop. So I put out another bet of about $230. Again, he makes the call. So looking for some help here on the river and it does come in in the form of the jack of clubs. So we end up with a nut straight, but there are three clubs on board now. He checks it to me again and it's a decision between just checking it, taking the showdown value or going for more value. Uh, I look back at my hand and I do have the Queen of Clubs in my hand, so that eliminates a bunch of potential flushes that he could have. And uh, it's actually harder to make flushes in this game since there are less, obviously, less flush cards available in the shorter deck. Um, that's the reason why flushes actually beat full houses in this game. That's a discussion for another day. Uh, in this hand, I decide to put out a bet and go for some value. I bet $340 and my opponent jams all in. Uh, pretty tough spot, pretty gross spot. Um, it's another maybe, I wanna say, actually not that much. It's probably only another five to $600 behind over my $340 bet. But I just don't see him raising as a bluff too often in this spot. There's not a lot of money left behind, so he doesn't have that much fold equity usually. And it's tough, I think, for him to have too many hands that aren't flushes that would uh, check call, check call, check raise there. So I make the fold. I go ahead and make the fold there. Um, long term, I'm not sure how good of a fold that is, but short term, it turns out to be a good one because he has 10-8 of clubs. So he uh, flopped pair plus gutter plus backdoor flush draw, turn flush draw, river flush. Yeah, we lose. Long story short, we lose that hand as well. Uh, so the short deck session was a fun one despite losing somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,200 in that session. Kind of sucks. I was winning in the, uh, the full deck game. I was up about 600 at one point. Give away the profit. End up booking a loss of $1,200. Um, that being said, it was really fun. All four of us in the game had a good time playing that short deck game looking to play it again looking to play it again as soon as possible uh if anyone in vegas wants to put these games together add me to your list of short deck participants okay so that brings us back to tuesday here at the golden nugget what are we doing uh just kind of chilling chilling tonight it's a tuesday night um i've kind of been thinking i've been doing some thinking you guys i feel like we have reached a point with the blogs where I've sort of brought the story up to speed. What I mean by that is that the story of the blog has sort of reached the story of my poker career. A person who has moved through the stakes up to 510, has some success in 510, not always success at that stake, uh, at least not in Vegas. Definitely some softer games outside of Vegas, but the latter getting up beyond 510 here in Las Vegas it's a steep one, it's a tough one. Uh, there's occasionally 10-20 games, but often they become 10-20-40 games. That is a tough ladder, uh, tough to get up to that next rung. There's also the issue of um, just, you know, capturing the same thing day in and day out. I'm not too sure how many times I can capture my chip stack in the 5-10 game at the Bellagio and do it in a different manner. Or how many times I can shuffle chips in that game and capture that on the blog. So I don't know, maybe it's time to just switch it up a little bit. Maybe it's time to do something different. Um, speaking of different, I actually was doing a little bit of live streaming the other day. Uh, last night, I played two tables of PLO on live stream on WSOP.com and then switched over to some No Limit Hands, played three tables of No Limit Hold'em while on live stream right here on YouTube, not on Twitch, right here on YouTube, and we had about 700 people in the audience uh, watching and just hanging out, and that was a blast. Just gonna put maximum pressure on this dude uh, if he wants to go for it. We still have outs, and we're gonna need those outs. Good luck. Nope. Let's see if he's in a folding mood, you guys. Hey, got it done, got it through. Get it in right away, right off the bat. Okay, good flop. Bad turn, bad river. I think I will be stacking off versus this guy and then rebuying immediately. And by rebuying, I mean rebuying through him. 
It's a blast for different reasons, partially because I can interact with you guys in real time. We can uh, have a chat about different things. I have some different ideas for some things we can do on live stream, but at the, at, a, at the very least, at the bare minimum, we can just interact and do Q and A's and stuff like that, and we can play poker in real time, and, and we can uh, we can all just hang out. It's also really fun because it's something new and it's different it's interesting it's to me it's interesting it's fun i said before i don't want to ever just be stagnant in one sort of situation in one game doing the same thing capturing the same thing on this vlog so i definitely plan on doing more of the live stream thing that whole arena is uh yet to be sort of really explored from my point of view Okay, that's a lot of chatter. Um, let's go play some more poker here. I'm gonna hop in this one-two game. I just sat at this table back here. I have $500 in my chip stack, and I have an idea. How's this for a completely ridiculous and pointless idea for this evening? Let's win $1,000, okay? And how about if anytime I get over $250, I'll have to switch casinos. So. We could end up going to four different casinos um, tonight in pursuit of this goal. Again, this is a totally pointless and ridiculous goal. You should never set monetary goals when you go out to play poker. You should set hourly goals and a goal of making good decisions. Not monetary goals. But who cares? This is my channel. I can do whatever I want. And it's Tuesday, and I don't feel like going to grind 510 at the Bellagio. So let's switch it up a little bit. Let's win $1,000. And if we win over $250 here at the Golden Nugget, we're gonna move on to a different property. And we're just gonna play one, two, or one, three. All right, <laughs> let's go. Let's go over here and play some cards. All right, guys, the 1K challenge is off and running, and uh, we actually got off to a pretty slow start. Uh, we were looking out at pocket sevens on an ace-king high flop, had to let that one go for uh, $12 each pre-flop. Later on, we put $14 in pre-flop with seven six suited. Uh, flop came down, 10-4 deuce with two hearts. No love there, had to let that go. We put an additional $10 to work on pocket deuces, flopped him down queen, queen seven, so let that one go on the flop as well. A little bit after that, there was an under the gun limp and an early position raise. That raiser made it $7, and there was a call after him. I looked down at ace jack off suit in the big blind. You know what it's time for? It's time for the squeeze play with ace jack off suit. I kick it up to $35, and sure enough, all players fold. Shortly after that, there was an early position raise to $5. There's two calls, and I look down at ace, queen of diamonds in the small blind. Could have put in the raise again, this time for value, and I make it $30 to go. The initial raiser and the first caller make the call. So three ways to a flop, which comes ace, nine, eight, rainbow. I put out a C-bet of $55 with top pair good kicker. The initial raiser folds, and the second player calls. Turns the four diamonds, so we add a flush draw, so we have a very good hand here. A couple of options available. I think betting or checking to induce are totally fine, so there's not gonna be too many bad cards now that we have a flush draw to go along with our top pair strong kicker I just decided to bet it. He's only got a hundred dollars and he's got less than the size of the pot So I bet the full hundred dollars goes in the tank thinking for a little while, but he decides on a fold All right shortly after that there was a middle position open at twelve dollars I look down at ace jack on the button I go ahead and flat here and everyone else folds. So we're going heads up to a flop which comes all spades I do have the ace of spades here, so a nut plus draw in our possession, and uh, she decides to check it. I decided to put out a bet, make it $15, uh, gives us some options later on. She goes ahead and calls. Turn is a favorable looking for a spade, so we make the nut plus here on the turn. She checks it over to me. I put out the old same bet. I bet $15 again, just try and get value from more spades and maybe induce. Uh, looks like that's what happens here. She goes ahead and raises it, she makes it $40 to go. I decided to flat here, under rep a little bit, and not blow her out of the water. River doesn't change anything, we still have the nuts here. And uh, good news, she puts out another bet, small ones, $25. Time to put in a raise. Uh, I think about maybe min-raising it here, which I think is very viable. No one wants to fold to a min-raise, even with uh, any flush, but I decided to kick it up a little bit. I go for the 3x raise and make it $75. She calls pretty quickly. Uh, so that one's coming our way. Off to a very good start here at the Gold Nugget, stop number one. We're actually $6 away from our 250 mark. If we win another small pot, we're gonna have to get up, move, go to a new property. All right, well, uh, part one of the 
ridiculous, pointless mission is accomplished. Uh, barely. Well, we faded what was almost a near disaster there. We actually lost like most of the profits. I knew this was going to happen too when I said we have about six dollars to go. Lost a couple pots, had one where I had top hair and got a bunch of value, but then a couple people uh, hit a gutter ball on the river, so lost a big pot in that one. But uh, later on, when there was a raise, I defended my big blind with queen eight of hearts in another hand. Uh, four ways to a flop where we flop a double gutter. The initial raiser put out a tiny sea bet of like $10 into like a $60 pot. The small blind called and then I put in a check raise thinking that the board was good for my range. Better for my range than the, the initial raiser and uh, if he's only betting $10 then it didn't look too strong to me. So yeah, I put in that check raise and what do you know, we face a re-raise. We face a three bet on the flop. Pretty small re-raise though, so have to call. Turn doesn't change anything and he puts out another small bet, so... Can't do anything other than call there, I don't think. River's a gin card for us, and before I can even say anything, my opponent jams $200 in on the river. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be calling that bet. And it turns out my opponent had a set of nines. Um, so we get a little bit owned there, I guess, on the flop. He induced a raise from us. Um, we do have decent equity though, like I said, with a double gutter. So luckily, that comes in. And we book a win. Uh, we lock up $1,069 here at the Golden Nuggets. Um, we were in for 500, so we are currently up $569. Uh, so we have another $431 to go. We have to switch properties now, according to my completely made up rules that I just came up with this evening. So, uh, where are we gonna go? So occasionally there's this situation where we go to a casino and I say something like, you know, I can't remember if we've been here or not together on the vlog. In this instance, I know for sure that we have not been here together on the vlog. Welcome to the Excalibur. guys, the Excalibur poker room right here. I've actually never played in this particular room. Uh, it used to be like out there a little bit more in the center of the casino and uh, apparently they've moved it into this little section here with a half wall thing happening. Uh, it actually looks pretty nice in there. Um, there's three one-two games going and uh, yeah, we're gonna hop in. As mentioned, we are currently up $569, so 431 to go. Let's go play poker. Okay guys, uh, not sure this was the best play, but wasn't the worst play. Uh, we ended up booking a small win here at the Excalibur of $25. Uh, there was definitely like a couple of action spots to be found in this game. Um, you can straddle into the gun for $5, and you can straddle on the button for $10. So the game can actually play like a little bit on the bigger side compared to what it's advertised as. The downside to those factors are that stack sizes are gonna be pretty small, and especially so according to big blinds, number of big blinds, when you're straddling for $10, basically playing a 5-10 game with people that have like $200 20 big blinds in their stack. So that's gonna make for some interesting spots. There's not gonna be a whole lot of maneuvering going on with 20 big blind stacks. Good news though, guys. Look at this service. Look at this. Entrance, car. Okay guys, I think I have one more destination in me. Power through, try and get to this $1,000 mark. guys round three here at Caesars Palace uh, sitting in the sports book but right back here 
is the poker room. You can't really see, but there is a one-two game happening right here. But as I arrived, the game was full. And uh, I actually came here by way of the Flamingo. And I was gonna play in the Flamingo one-two game, but that game was full too. However, there is a two-five game over here, if I'm pointing in the right spot, uh, that I'm gonna play in. I'm gonna break my own rules. Why not? It's a ridiculous challenge. The rules, therefore, are ridiculous and therefore I can break them as I see fit. So I'm just gonna hop in this 2-5 game. We're gonna try and get this last $400, achieve the 1K uh, goal, and then uh, call it a night and go to bed. All right, good luck us, let's go. 2-5, 1K max, Caesar's Palace. Light. It burns, you guys, it burns. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, we gave it our best. We gave it our best effort tonight, today, this morning. Once again over here at Caesars, got off to a slow start, uh, lost a few pots early on, but things turned around as we grinded it out, found Jack 10, open that up for a raise, flop an open ender, put the C-bite in and take it down. Later on, we looked down at Ace King, open that up with a button straddle on, flop top pair. Don't get any value, but we do take that pot down as well. Later on, in the most significant hand, there was a raise from, I believe, the hijack to $30. Folds over to us with pocket kings in the big blind. I make it 110 to go, and the initial raiser calls. Flop comes 10, deuce, deuce, with two diamonds. Put out a small C bet of $75, and he calls. Turns a jack of diamonds. I bet 180, and he calls. River's a brick. I bet $400. He tanks for about a minute and a half, and then he does not make the call. He folds, so we take that one down. That's all, that's all she wrote. That's all the uh, interesting developments from Caesar's Palace. The game breaks not too long after that. So there's good news and bad news here, guys. The good news is we book a win at Caesar's Palace. We get into that game for $1,000 and we get out of that game for $1,000. Two hundred forty, something like that. We come up shy of about one hundred and sixty dollars for our one-day goal of one thousand dollars. Actually, I have no clue where I am right now. I never find myself over here, but I think we're going in the right direction. Anyway, I think it's kind of like typical for uh, the channel, the way a lot of my goals have gone do really well but not quite get there but that's okay overall it's more good than bad for sure and uh, pretty grateful to just be able to do this like even though it's a ridiculous time of day right now uh, to be wandering around the streets looking for my car trying to figure out how the hell to get back to self parking at the Flamingo Hotel and Casino maybe it's this way yeah this is really fun this was probably the most fun that I've had uh, doing a little grindathon thing Yeah, I think this is probably the most fun I've had just grinding uh, and making a vlog, making a video in uh, a little while. It's really loud. So anyway, not sure if you guys thought this was uh, completely ridiculous, dropping down to one, two, one dollar, two dollar stakes and uh, running around to three different properties on a Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning. But uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool, um, really fun. I don't know how cool it was, but I thought it was really fun. 
and uh, kind of brought me back to the early days. So I don't know, maybe we'll do some more challenges. If you guys have any ideas for challenges, one thing I do want to do more of is do some more live streaming and just different ideas. Less uh, same thing every day, more variety I think is going to be key for me uh, as far as the poker grind in Las Vegas in particular and the vlog grind. So time for bed I think. One other announcement is if you guys are looking for a way to study some poker, 25% off Black Friday sale over at Upswing. If you guys want to get your study on, I'll put a link down below, pin it to the top of the comments, all that usual nonsense salesy bullshit. All right, I'm out of here. Good night.